One afternoon, I was coming back from the library to study. And I saw a note, pink, on my door, dormitory door. And it was from Professor Dio. And the note saying, you come to my house tonight. I thought, well, yeah, because it, I always go to his house on the weekend, <coughs> have a dinner, and <coughs> as a discussion. So I thought, well, maybe just for the dinner and the discussion night. But that was not the weekend. So I was curious. But anyway, I went to his house. As usual, his wife is a young, very attractive uh, American lady. She cooked at that night, she cooked a very special dinner for us. And after dinner, Professor Lo asked me to come to his office is a study room. Then he suddenly asked me, would you like to go to US to study? I was shocked. I said, then I came, Professor Dale, you know, Oh, this year, I haven't known him since I was in junior. I said, you know me. I always had a dream to study abroad. But you also know my f family simply just cannot afford me. And I wouldn't dare to ask my parents for this. He said, just tell me, just tell me, would you like to go to the U.S.? He said, the Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas, just appointed me as a professor in the department. And as a package, I negotiate to have an admission and a scholarship for you. Not in the economic department though, but in the statistics department. He knew I was very good in math and in statistics. So if they, I already negotiate with them as a package to have you study there and give you admission and a scholarship. Would you like to go? I was shocked. I didn't know what to say. Except I simply just hug him, you know, uh, crying, you know, you know. But he said, I'm leaving tomorrow morning to the U.S. I leave my wife and the children behind, but I'm going tomorrow morning, early tomorrow morning, go years. I say, ask him why? He said, because the military police of the government is preparing to arrest him. He has opposing view to this government, he think that Taiwan should be an independent democratic country. And the Taiwan was of course controlled by Chiang Kai-shek. He was a dictator. So he really opposed this dictatorship and they are prepared to arrest him. So you say, I have to, I have to run, I'm leaving, but I will see you next semester of the Southern Missouri University. So he left. 
I didn't see him since that night until in the 1980. Because I didn't go to the Southern Methodist University. Instead, I went to the University of North Carolina, the Chapel Hill. <laughs> well, over the weekend, I went home. I didn't know whether I should tell my father about this or not. One thing, this is my dream of going to the U.S. to study. On the other hand, also, I knew that my family simply just has no means to support me on this. Besides the scholarship, I, not, I need to come up with tons of money. First of all, at that time, the U.S. government required, if you want to study abroad, U.S., you need to have a 3,000 U.S. dollar, which about $120,000 Taiwanese money as a deposit for the prepare for a year of living expenses. <laughs> Plus, I need a year of your money. I think it's somewhere around the eight hundred dollars for, you know, airfare and the living expenses. Where does the money come from? So I wouldn't dare to tell my father. So a week later, my father sensed that I have something in mind. Didn't want to talk to him. So finally he asked me, what do you have in your mind? So I told him about the Professor Leo's offer. We said, you should go. You should go. And I will try to find the money for you. I was so moved. But I, I knew he can't come up with that money. At the end, he scratched all the family saving to buy the ticket for me. About $800. <laughs> To my mother, I must wear the moon. What is the United States? Never heard of it before, except when I told them. Particularly my mother, who worries so much. She worried I might go hungry when I go there, because she heard in U.S. there's no rice. People only eat bread, no rice. So she asked me, should I pack some rice for you? Should I pack the pillow, blanket, and Mosquito net. My sister, Jia Hui, bought a winter coat for me. My uncle knew I was going to the U.S. He gave me 500 U.S. dollars as a gift. Simply just give it to me. But still, the biggest money is that $3,000, that he passes the money. One of my roommates in my high school, he said, boy, I lent you $3,000, no interest. I was so moved. 
He was simply just say, just take us three thousand dollars. So when I came to U.S., I immediately withdraw the money and then send it back. He was really a friend. And I know when we when people say a friend in need is really a friend indeed. I went back to Doma University. I had to say goodbye to two of my dear professor. One of them is Professor Su Jia Yang, and the other one is Professor Tan. He was my statistic professor. Professor Tan said, maybe you want to think about going to University of North Carolina Chapel here to study economics. Oh, this year you are the econ major. You are not a statistic major, although you put the good in statistics. He also said, actually, the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill is a better school than the Southern Methodist University. So I changed my mind a month before, you know, leaving for U.S. But that is a huge gamble for me because I applied late to the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. They only gave me admission without scholarship. Where's the chapel here? Oh, my U.S. map, I look at it, couldn't find the chapel here. I search all the bookstore, try to find a map. No map has a chapel here then. Chapel, North Carolina is a long, you know, kind the of state. I don't know where, is it east, west, and middle? I have no idea. So finally, I went to a bookstore in Taipei and find a map. There's a chapel here. One small dot. The chapel here. I was really disappointed. I was supposed to go to US, right? US, that's a lot of big city, you know? But chapel here, one dot. In September of uh, 1964, everybody get together at the Taipei airport to send me off. I remember when I got on the plane and I sit down inside the plane and look outside the window. I really couldn't control myself. I was crying. Really. I saw them waving at me. Of course, they cannot see me. I really feel I was so blessed. So love by my parents. They really sacrificed so much for me. And now I am leaving them to this unknown place called America, the US. I have no friend, no relative, and even a long future. And I don't even know when, if able, I will see them again.
Well, Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill is on the ball through the boogie. Do you Chapel Hill boogie? Now the Roddy Durham Airport is a big airport. At that time, back in 1964, was a tiny airport in the middle of nowhere. So when I stepped down the airplane, I took her down. My gosh, it is a place. All I see is fear, green pasture, and some cow over there. <laughs> I was no friend, no relative to pick, him up, pick me up at the airport. So I had no choice. I call a taxi. He asked me, where you want to go? I said, go to Chapel Hill, University of North Carolina. So he said, happy. So as soon as I got in to the taxi, I fell asleep in the back seat. I don't know how many hours since I left. I think it must be at least 48 hours, at least. I was so tired, so I immediately fell asleep in the back seat. I suddenly wake up, and I saw, oh, there's a lot of tree on the sides of this road here. So I asked a taxi driver, where are we now? Oh, so we're in the campus. I asked, how can this be a campus? There's no gate. There's no campus gate. Because in Taiwan, every university has a gate. And the gate there, there is a security people mending at the gate. Now you come in here, there's no gate, no security people. I said, he was laughing at me. <laughs> it's laughing at me. So he pull up to a building in front of the building, there's a tent and there's a table. I guess it is the reception place. So they helped me to carry the suitcase. Then they asked me, have you registered for the dormitory? I said, no. Do you have a friend or anybody? In campus, I said, I don't know any friend, no relative, no friend, nothing. Well, he said, the residential office closed today, is Saturday. So maybe we put you up at the university inn. So they took me to this university inn called Carolina Inn, which was a beautiful inn, colonial style, white color, that I remember. So to the check-in counter there, how many nights you want to stay? Or is it Saturday night? Sunday because they no office open on the weekend. So they on the register for two nights. I look at ah huh? six dollars a night. Two nights will be twelve dollars. Have no choice. So I check in the room in the second floor. I was so really tired because after 48 hours without sleep <clears throat> and I was hungry. So I took a hot shower, cleaned up myself, put the new shirt, you know, clothes on, and then I came down 
the steel. I ask people to say, where is the dining room? He said, oh, dining room is right there. So I went to the dining room. There's a waiter standing in front of the dining room. He would let me in to the dining room. He come, kept pointing at me. I didn't know what he was talking about. Why they kept talking? I'm pick, and they pointed at me. Would let me in. Finally, he said, "Well, necktie." We say, "I didn't wear a necktie." I didn't know that. You go to dining room, you have to wear the necktie. Anyway, I went back to my room. I put up my necktie and they came down. He led me to a table. I've never seen a dining room before in my life. All the table has a white cloth on. In the center of the table has flower, candlelight. What's a fancy? Dining room brought a menu to me. I look at it. I couldn't read really words of it. All oh, this menu just fallen to me. But strike me is all oh, the expensive. Besides, they know how to read the menu. They are all expensive. Eight dollars, ten dollars. Oh my gosh! Finally, I saw one thing there. I knew the words, and it only six dollars. Chicken. So I point to the waiter. This anything else? No. Water? No. No. Because I was so afraid. Now chicken is six dollars. If I have anything else, I go broke. Even water I can. It turned out actually, you go to the restaurant. The chicken is a main dish. The appetizer, dessert come with it. Water come with you. And I was so afraid that I spent the money, I kept shaking my head. No, 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 no. So I have a piece of chicken. He brought in a piece of chicken. I was so hungry, I finished it, even without water, in five minutes. And now I pay six dollars. I went back to my room upstairs. Boy, I was almost crying. The first day in U.S., I spent twenty-six dollars, eight dollars for the taxi fare, two nine for twelve dollars. That's a twenty dollars already. A piece of chicken, six dollars. The first day. I spent twenty six dollar. I have totally only four hundred dollars in my pocket. I said, oh "My gosh, I will go broke in no time." So I asked them, "I say, hey, can you find some Taiwanese people?" Student here for me because I didn't have a friend, and so I thought that's a Taiwanese people student might able to help me. They said, "Yeah, I will find." Them. So the next morning, Sunday morning, the two students from Taiwan came to see me, knock on my door. These two friends. First time saw me. 
Are you rich or something? Move out here. You don't stay here. I said, yeah, I, I like to move out. <laughs> stay with us. I said, okay. So we went downstairs. I said, okay, sure. I want to cancel my second night. He said, no. You already paid for it. You reserve the two night. We cannot get a, you cannot get a refund on that. I said, oh my God, I spent six dollars for the second night. Anyway, <clears throat> so the two friends say, I show you around the campus. So he showed me around the campus. And then he showed me where is the cafeteria is. Now I know what's the difference between cafeterias and the dining room. In the cafeteria, a meal only costs 40 cents. Breakfast only costs 20 cents. So a dollar in day, your meal will only cost you a dollar. Think about compared with six dollars of chicken. <laughs> so from then on, the entire Year was with uh, no, uh, the campus there. I if that I eat uh, the cafeteria for dollars a day. So the first thing is two friends told me say we need to go to register first and then get you to a dormitory. So when I went to the register office, I hand them my admission paper. You want to register? Yes, to register. Tuition, $250. $250? I don't want the money. Tuition will be $250, they ask me to register. I told him, I don't have money to earn a In my pocket, I have totally from Taiwan come over here, I have only $400 in my pocket. I own, already spent $26. I don't have $250 for tuition money. The guy took out of me, it's very funny. You know? How can this? foreign student come all the way from Taiwan to study here has no tuition money. I said, Simba Chato, I don't have tuition money. He seemed to be sympathetic. He said, wait, wait a minute. So he went back to the back room. And a few minutes later he came back, he said, University is waiting to waive you the tuition money. <laughs> I was so relieved. <laughs> then he said, Do you have a dormitory? I said, No, I don't have a dormitory. Okay, you have to register for a dormitory. $120. $120? I was going to tell him, I don't have $120. But the guy, you know, on the, that's a different tuition money and dormitory fees are different. So I asked him, can I pay the installment instead of one semester $120? Can I pay installment three months? I mean, three installment or four installment? When I say, yeah, okay. So I guess I pay him $30, I think, to 
for the first month, my dormitory, free. So now, I register, I got a dormitory now, room, so we got a key, I check in the dormitory. That morning. In the afternoon, my two friends came back again. One of them happened to be an econ major also. He was two years ahead of me, so he knew all this. So he took me to the economic department. So I went to the economic department, I told the chairman, say, I'm here now, I already registered now to be a student now. He said, welcome to the department. Then I immediately asked him, do you think you still have some scholarship money left for me? <laughs> he said, unfortunately, no. It's already, all the money has been appropriately distributed to the student. But he did promise me, he said, next semester, see whether I can find some financial aid for you. And the next year you apply for the scholarship. I said, that's fine. And in the second semester, the chairman did find some financial aid for me, so helped me to pay <coughs> some of my living expenses. But then the second year's on, I got a full scholarship, you know, and that's the last until I graduate.